Good afternoon. Today we'll be presenting bloodstained documentation by Carlos Flores, Arturo Pereira, Anna Carter, and Mildred Manley by Holmes Groups. What is the importance of analyzing bloodstain? Bloodstain documentation is the science of analyzing and documenting bloodstain patterns in a crime scene. Oftentimes, this will give investigators a clue of what exactly happened in a crime scene. This is especially crucial when there is a lot of evidence missing. Oftentimes, after a crime scene is committed, the suspect will clean the scene by getting rid of the body or evidence like weapons, but oftentimes will leave the blood stains. This can be very helpful to investigators to know what exactly happened. How are blood stains formed? There is a lot of complexity when it comes to blood stains. There are many different types of blood stains that can be formed. There's at least 52 different types. This makes it really difficult to know what exactly to look for sometimes. And there's four different factors that influence the creation of blood stain. And these are surface tension, viscosity, gravity, and the loss of thickness. To make it more simple, the angle at which a blood stain hits a surface is going to determine how it will be formed. The speed, whether it's fast or slow, is also going to influence. Another thing that also impacts how it's formed is the amount of blood that is spattered. When there's large quantities, sometimes the blood spatter will be 6 millimeters or more in diameter, while very small quantities will be 1.1 millimeters or less in diameter. After the blossoms are found, it's very important to measure them vertically and horizontally with a ruler against the wall or the floor. While doing this, it's very important that you document the measurements of each of the blood stains found. In this video right here, we're going to see how a blood stain is formed when it's hit from a different angle. What makes the bloodstain crime scene unique? It can help investigators determine the origin. Um, the origin, the analyst will take a string from the blood splatter to the area that they believe the blood came from. It can also help determine the location. Um, at the time of the crime scene, if the blood shed in that particular location doesn't amount the injuries that the body has and they'll know that the location that happened there um, they can know if the body was sitting or standing at the time that the blood was shed it also can help determine the orientation um, it can help to um, know if what weapon was used was there a knife used um, did they have blood force trauma was there a gun used um, and the size and the shape of the blood spatter can help determine the orientation as well. Um, when an investigator has a suspect, the blood can help eliminate that particular suspect if their DNA is not found at the crime scene as well. And this video will show you the origin, location, and orientation of different blood stain patterns. Today, blood stain pattern analysis is routinely used in murder investigations. Modern blood stain catalysts are trained to recognize and interpret 
three main categories of blood stains. Drip stains, or passive stains, occur when the force of gravity pulls drops of blood from any object down onto the floor or surface. They are generally round and fat, with no tails. If someone is stabbed in the arm and there's blood that forms on the end of the, the clothing and forms a drop and falls down, that would be a passive drop of blood. The second category of blood stains are transfer stains. Transfer stain is when you have blood on something, like your hand or a cloth, and it comes in contact with a non-bloody surface and transfers, smears the blood on it. But when force is impacting and dispersing blood, it breaks up into droplets and produces a third and very different type of blood stain called spatter. Spatter can be classified as either high, medium, or low velocity. Analysts first look at the shape of the stain. The shape determines the direction the blood was traveling. A circular stain means it hit a surface relatively straight on at a 70 to 90 degree angle. But if a stain has a tail, that indicates the direction the blood was traveling. Next, the analyst measures the length and the width of each stain and calculates the angle of impact using simple trigonometry. The final step is to literally connect the dots by using lasers to show the path that each bloodstain traveled. And where those paths converge is where the injury took place. What type of challenges does the bloodstain crime scene pose for investigators? Um, one of the biggest issues that the investigators may have is the weather that day. Um, if it already rained, then it could already have destroyed some of the evidence. Um, if it begins to rain, once they arrive, they have to work quickly in order to get the photographs documented um, so they, they can get as much information um, before it rains the entire crime scene out. Um, snow, any type of inclement weather can affect the crime scene for the investigators. Lack of information. Photographs are the best way to document blood stains. And if there are not enough photographs, they can also put a, a delay in the investigation. Um, notes, the, the investigators need as many notes as possible when documenting the blood stains. Um, if the entire scene is, is blood splatter everywhere, then that needs to be notated um, accurately because um, not accurately collecting the patterns could put a delay in the investigation. But if you have the photographs to go back on to look at, as well as the notes, that will help if any questions are asked later in the investigation. Um, Oprah overlapping the bloodstain patterns uh, cre can create a confusion if they are not documented properly. If there is a shoe print of bloodstains, as, <clears throat> as well as a blood splatter, that can Put a delay in the investigation as well and can challenge the investigators if they're not documented properly. Um, different blood stain patterns. When suspects tamper with the evidence and the blood patterns could have been from the distance, the direction, or the nature, if that is affected, that can also pose a challenge for the investigators as well because that particular blood spatter may have came from a knife, but if that suspect tries to clean that evidence up, they may not be able to can tell what happened at that crime scene. Does the blood stain crime scene require any special equipment, training, or protocols? The most important piece of equipment when documenting blood stains is a professional quality camera. You need to be able to adjust all of the settings of the camera, including the focus, lighting, and shutter speed settings. This is in order to ensure that you get the best quality pictures no matter what the situation of the crime scene is. In your crime scene kit, you also need to have strings and lasers. You can set these up after you determine the angle that the blood stains were dropped from in order to help you recreate where the blood stain came from. 
There have also been software programs that have recently been developed in order to help recreate the bloodstain patterns. Even if you were in a lab, you can virtually recreate the crime scene using these programs and even put in virtual strings, therefore eliminating any human error in the stringing process. In regards to training, bloodstain pattern analysts also need to have years of extensive research, experimentation, and special education in order to determine how bloodstains are formed. What type of processing techniques are used with the bloodstain crime scene? Photography is probably the most important element for documentation of bloodstain patterns. You need to have overall photos, mid-range photos, and close-up photos of all of the bloodstains. Overall photos of the crime scene will give the viewer of the photos reference to where the bloodstains are in the scene. Mid-range photos will also give you an overall of the bloodstains themselves. And close-up photos will give detail of each of the bloodstains. In regards to measuring the bloodstain patterns, you need to have photos with and without a ruler. You also need to have a protractor to determine the angle of impact, which will help with the stringing process in order to locate the origin. It is also important that you take evidence quality photographs, as most of the surfaces that have bloodstains on them cannot be removed for lab analysis, as most people want to keep their places intact. So therefore, proper documentation is necessary so that you can analyze the photographs in the lab. It is also important to have good photos because once you leave the crime scene, the blood will most likely be cleaned up and then you've just lost that evidence if you don't have good quality pictures. This video gives an example of how the stringing method is used for crime scenes. We're calling in a forensic expert to assist us in telling exactly where our victim was standing and where the offender shot her from. Down here. If our tests show us that she couldn't see who shot her, then Kurt is very viable. Okay, hey Pete, what do we got? All right, I have quite a bit of information for you. Sweet. We spent a lot of time on the trajectory and on the blood spatter. Okay. So. I have 12 defects in the door. I was able to derive this general area of origin for the blood spatter. Okay. She would have been standing somewhere right around here. Somewhere around this area, plus or minus a few inches. Let, let's turn on the laser, and then we'll sort of see where the, where the pieces come together. Fair enough. OK, so now I've got my dot. I'm going to kill the lights, send the fog out. Oh, wow. That's incredible. That's pretty cool. That is absolutely incredible. Now you can consider anywhere along this line, there could be a muzzle of a shotgun. Keep that in mind. Okay, I got you. Okay, Pete, based on where you're standing, is it possible that the shooter turns first, shoots the, the father laying in the bed, and then sh just turns the shotgun? and shoots the mother coming out of the bathroom. If we use my ruler as a, as a shotgun, let's say hypothetically. Okay. Someone walks into the room, I shoot at the victim in bed, and I can, I can move and I can shoot oh, here. That, sound, that sounds feasible. That's one scenario. I know, I know, but it, it looks good. Does this type of pricing require any special evidence or uh, packaging or any collection, evidence collection? First, we need to determine that the uh, crime scene is secure and that nobody is around that might alter the evidence. By doing this, we got two types of blood stains, which is the uh, wet absorption, the scraping method, and also the lifting with tape. Wet absorption is usually held whenever we got dry blood stains and we just gotta get a sterile swab or also a gauze pad and get it wet with distilled water and uh, just pack it up. Uh, the scraping method is easier, but it requires a special type of surface, a smooth surface. Uh, you need a razor blade also or a scalpel, and all you got to do with that, just put a paper underneath and then scrape it off and put a fold of the paper and put it in the envelope. The next one is uh, lifting with tape, and this one 
is usually held whenever we need a, a fingerprints. Whenever there's a fingerprint inside the, like in the blood stain, what we need to do is same as a lifting fingerprints, we need to put a tape over it and then be careful because whenever you uh, mess with the fingerprint and the blood stain is gonna, you gotta be uh, very careful with knowing how to lift it. Whenever you lift it, it's gonna stick with the, uh, on the adhesive top of the tape and then from there you put on a clear piece of clear bag or paper and then uh, just label it and take it to the laboratory so they can examine it. The next kind of uh, blood stain is the uh, wet blood stains, which in this one you gotta be very very careful because if you seal up uh, the blood and it's still wet, it's gonna cause moisture in the package and therefore it's gonna alter the blood stain. Um, if you seal it with the container, if the container sealed, you are gonna probably cause the growth of microorganisms in, which also is gonna make the blood all be altered. Um, if you are to seal the blood stain first, you gotta make sure that the container is not fully sealed and if it is, uh, you gotta open it up because like I said, it's gonna, all the information that uh, the, DNA, the DNA that the blood has is all gonna go away because uh, like I said, the microorganisms are gonna grow inside the container and other unique safety concerns with this type of uh, crime scene, first, always use uh, any safety precautions because whenever you're handling blood, you don't know that person that was, uh, that the victim or the suspect had any disease. So the first thing you gotta wear is wear gloves before and uh, wear protective clothing and also also face masks. Face masks. <laughs> and then, uh, all these is only whenever you're handling biological evidence and in some cases you are you're gonna need some eye protection another thing I should mention is whenever the investigator goes or arrives at the crime scene they gotta have uh, footwear protection also because uh, if there's a bloody footprint on the floor and they got their rubber rubber boots on it's gonna also alter the blood stain and therefore we're not going to be able to take photographs because it's going to be altered. We might take the DNA but not the photograph. Um, and that's, and uh, here are our references.